what I realized was the frame of the science that we were working on was off. That there's so much more to our world and life than the conventional medicine and science will tell us about. And what it comes down to is pretty simple. That what we're taught about our lives and the world is somewhere between incomplete and totally wrong. Cue music. Places, everybody places. We're starting in three, two. It's time for Life Interrupted Radio, a show dedicated to practical skills for your mind, body, and soul. We're hoping we'll go in one ear and stay there. Here's the host of the show, Sharon Saylor. Welcome to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio, where we look at the rise of autoimmune disorders. The NIH estimates nearly 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder. To put that in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. You'll be as surprised as I was to find out what autoimmune entails. I brought together top experts that range from doctors, specialists, nutritionists, researchers, and even those recovering from autoimmune to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information about autoimmunity and how to live your life uninterrupted. So let's get started. Welcome, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And oh, my goodness, it's my weekend. I hope it's your weekend, too. I'm so looking forward to this weekend. I'm on the East Coast again, and I'm down in sunny Florida enjoying it, getting away from some of the cold weather of the Pacific Northwest. So I hope you guys are having something. And what are you curled up with tonight? Yes, I'm still on my chai tea kick here. I've got it with the homemade almond milk. Mm, it's great. Yeah. I did order some more of that tea from my friend in London. So I'll let you know when that arrives because that was fantastic. She's sending me some new flavors. So I'll let you know what she sends because it's always a surprise. And tonight is also a surprise. I am looking forward to our guest because his story is so fascinating. His name is Brent Michael Phillips, and he was a successful MIT-trained engineer who was one of the people who helped create the Internet. He's ex and he, during that time, he experienced a staggering physical challenge when chronic pain landed him with a permanent disability, and then his arm became paralyzed after surgery. I think a lot of us can relate because after a long bout of unsuccessful treatments, Brent experienced a miracle when his elbow instantly healed from energy healing. And this absolutely changed his life. He's going to share his story because it's pretty amazing. And he spent years studying from various master healers and spiritual teachers to discover and reverse engineer the scientific laws and principles principles underlying miraculous instant healing, financial abundance, and even enlightenment. We'll talk to him more because he has a, just an awesome bio. I could keep going on and on, but I want to make sure that Brent has plenty of time to share with us because it's just such a fascinating story. Welcome, Brent. Oh, this is great. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> this is awesome. Your story just blew me away. And I, too, had an instant, uh, well, not totally instant, but a, an epiphany moment where things began to heal, not as instantly as your story reads, but that was a moment I can point to directly and say, turning point in my healing journey. So share with us a little bit about your backstory, because I was so fascinated. Somebody from a scientific mind in a doctoral program in the sciences and all of a sudden engineering, that seems like such a, a diff, so different than energy healing. It is. And I'm the first to admit, <laughs> I never thought I'd be doing anything like this. Oh my gosh. When I was growing up, I always loved technology. I was a total geek. And uh, so it became obvious to me that, well, I wanted to learn to be a computer programmer because I saw that as the one thing I was good at that I could get paid for. So uh, long story short, I ended up in college at MIT where I discovered the internet. And of course, that sounds funny today, but back in the 80s, no one had ever heard of the internet, and I just fell in love. And uh, you know, over the next several years, I got my bachelor's at MIT, I got my master's degree, and I was actually working towards my uh, PhD at MIT in graduate school when the internet boom hit. Yeah. And so 
Uh, I left graduate school figuring I'll work really hard for a couple of years, start some technology company, sell it for millions of dollars, and then retire to a tropical island and spend my days hot tubbing with supermodels. That oh, was that sounds good. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds great, like a right? Great plan. <laughs> and so it got off to a great start. It's uh, really funny that the very first website I ever created in my life was the website for the launch of the Sony PlayStation in 1995. Wow. So that was my first website. Uh, after a year, I had 15 people working for me. <clears throat> I had started a second company to create a revolutionary kind of online game. And uh, long story short, the uh, physical strain of working 100-hour work weeks, uh, my health collapsed. Mm. And uh, yeah, I started having severe pain all over my body. Uh, I mean, it wasn't just a little tingle in my wrist. I mean, I was in so much pain. Uh, I could only drive about 10 minutes at a time because it hurt too much to hold a steering wheel. Oh, wow. Some I even of us had can to move... relate with autoimmune yeah. conditions. Yeah, it, it, it was really, really serious. I had to move in with my parents because there were a lot of times I needed my mother or father to help me to cut my food or do something really basic like that. Oh, wow. And so I, I was wiped out. Uh, long story short, I spent three years in conventional treatments going through all these intensive regimens of physical therapy, occupational therapy, ergonomics, movement retraining, yada, yada, right? Uh, what, what ended up happening was <clears throat> that for me, uh, none of that stuff helped. I just got worse. Mm. And so after about three years of doing all this conventional treatment, uh, I went and had a f an appointment with the top guy, right? I waited three years. They have sort of a hierarchy. I was at the Tr Curling Job Clinic in Los Angeles, the top place that's where all the olympians and professional athletes go mm -hmm. and it took me three years to get in to see the top guy and i figured okay he's going to have the answer right he's the expert with all the diplomas on the wall <laughs> and i yes, remember some of us can see this coming <laughs> yeah and he looked over all my files and i'm like what well, how are we going to do this how are we going to do this right he goes i'm sorry son but there's nothing i or an doctor can do you'll always be in pain you'll never be able to work and i was just like what and, you know, I was 27 years old at the time. And the last thing he said before I got kicked out of his office was, he said, tell me, son, is there someone that can take care of you until you die? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So I was at 27 years old. He put me on permanent disability and told me that my life was over. There was no chance I could ever recover or go back to work or have any kind of normal life. And uh, that was just the beginning of the fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you and your listeners have heard about, uh, we talk about the dark night of the soul where everything falls apart. So this uh, crushing diagnosis was just a piece of it. Uh, my lifelong best friend who, who I had recruited to found this company sold the company for millions of dollars behind my back. I ended up you know, with nothing but a lawsuit against him. Uh, he also uh, had been secretly dating the woman that I was crazy in love with. I was broke, living at home, going into debt, told I could never work again, living with a high level of chronic pain. And so wow. That that was, you know, that was really the, as they call it, the dark night of the soul. Uh, a couple things that s saved me from total oblivion, I got really into positive thinking. And back in the 90s, we called it positive thinking. Today, we call it the law of attraction, but it's the same stuff, right? <laughs> and I go to motivational seminars, and I jump around on the stage and shout out that, you know, yeah, I'm a winner, a conqueror, a millionaire, right? And I joined mastermind groups and put power words on my walls. And I did my mantras 108 times a day religiously and all these things. But it didn't help. Uh, isn't that interesting? It didn't right? help. We, but this idea of having a label put on you that sure. you know, just get used to it. This is your life. Be real. It's never going to yep. change. That's exactly what I heard from my occupational therapist, you know, my biofeedback therapist, my orthopedist, all the people with all the diplomas said, Brent, give up. Yeah. You can't win this battle. And I didn't want to hear that. So, again, long story short, I then turned to alternative medicine. And I spent five years as a full-time patient. All I did was go around for treatments. And you know, we don't want to spend the time on all the things I tried, but it's like hundreds of different things. And after five years of full-time treatment, I still was getting worse. That's when I had the surgery. And I woke up from the surgery and my arm was frozen like this. It was paralyzed. Oh, my gosh. And so, uh, again, long story short, I tried lots of things, including another operation, uh, CPM machine, physical therapy, manipulations. I ended up going to see a friend of my aunt, uh, my, my aunt Lauren, who her friend Terry, she had known for a long time. And Terry was super smart, Wharton School MBA, made lots of money working in finance. 
and she got sick and almost died. And she found this system of energy healing that literally saved her life. And she quit her career in finance to be a healer. And I thought she was nuts, right? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, why I would you do that? Yeah, absolutely. yeah. She had this great six-figure job, great future ahead of her. And she just walked away from it to start doing healings out of her apartment in Santa Monica. And so I booked a session with Terry. And I walked in and she was just all smiles. Oh, Brento, don't worry about your arm. We can take care of that. You know, just sit down. And she spent an hour with me asking me questions and do, doing the subconscious block clearing process. And at the end, she goes, okay, let's do a healing. And I remember she's sitting across the room from me, right? This is all done with a mind. There's no machine, no hands-on, nothing like that. And she's kind of in this meditative trance with her eyes closed. And I'm like looking out the window thinking about, hmm, you know, where do I want to go for lunch on the way home, right? <laughs> right? And I felt a pop inside my elbow. It was like a little firecracker went off. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, oh, my God, I could move my arm again. And so that was just the first of many, many miracles. Uh, that was, as you say, the turning point. At the time, I had no idea what was happening or how it worked. But I remember I looked at Terry and I said, Terry, I don't know what she just did but I'm going to learn this. I did exactly what she did. I walked away from my career where I had all this training, all these degrees, right? Because, you know, I, I wasn't just an engineer. I was one of the best of the best at MIT. You know, I, I don't want to brag, but I was really good. Yeah. You know, I had honors awards. I had a perfect GPA for six and a half years. You know, all the professors knew me. And that's and what just, attracted I me gave to that your up. story. That's yep. what attracted me to your story because I'm like, wow, engineers are usually pretty straightforward by the book. You know, and you know what? I still am. B, B to C, D to C. <laughs> yeah, if you get to know me, you'll see I still think and talk and dress like an engineer. <laughs> but uh, what I realized was the, the frame of the science that we were working on w was off, that there's so much more to our world and life than the conventional medicine and science will tell us about. And so it was funny when I first got into this, I thought, oh, you know, I'm this smart guy. Learning this stuff can't be any harder than MIT, right? Oh my gosh, I couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, the first trainings I went to to develop intuition, to learn to heal, I was absolutely the worst of the worst. You know, I, I could hold the Guinness Book of World's record for like least talented healer on earth. <laughs> but what I didn't have in talent, I did have, in dedication, in discipline. And so I spent about 10 years going to all these different trainings and healers and masters and gurus. And I little by little, I figured out what it is they were doing. I figured it out what it was they were really teaching us. And what it comes down to is pretty simple, that what we're taught about our lives in the world is somewhere between incomplete and totally wrong. That's true. <laughs> I, I'm sure, I think you would agree with that, right? Absolutely, especially through my healing experience of the last yeah, years. Yeah, of course. And so I realized that the, there's so much of what we were taught is so wrong. And what I did was uh, really what any good engineer would do. I went out and learned all the best of the best systems that were out there. And I took them apart and figured out how they worked. And then I innovated. I found a way to make it easier, better, faster, more powerful. I spent years and years spending so much money on my journey, oh my gosh, uh, to learn all this stuff. And most of the places I went, there was a lot of garbage, and every now and then you'd find a gem. Mm -hmm. And so I've just spent years sifting through all the garbage to find all the gems and create a really simple, easy process to help people learn to access their true power for physical healing, for emotional healing, to make money, to develop their intuition, to find purpose. But I have to say, all that is, I don't want to, this to come across wrong, but it is basic and kind of entry level. Ultimately, what I really want to teach people is higher consciousness. There's a different way of living and being that comes with a, with a, a new definition and understanding of you. What are you? What is this awareness in your head? What exactly is the nature of that? Where does it come from? When we understand what we are, that's what, what is called awakening or the study of non-duality, Advaita Vedanta. That is, as they say, the foot in the door to enlightenment. Okay, and so, that was going to be my question. What is the yes. difference between awakening and enlightenment? Because That's I a great question. I, I'm going to offer three words that I'm going to carefully define. That's the engineer in me, right? <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you words. I want, you to, I want everyone listening and watching to know exactly what I mean when I say these words. Uh, the first is metaphysics. Metaphysics is sort of the technology, the engineering of energy learning to use the mind to heal, 
to, to work with the subconscious, law of attraction, accessing a theta brain state, synchronizing the brain state, dissolving pain, uh, clearing space, intuitive guidance. These are wonderful processes and tools that I call metaphysics. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the first thing I want to teach people is I want to make metaphysics so easy for you, it's ridiculous. First step is the metaphysics. I want people to learn that because this is your foundation for success in life, to help yourself, to heal your body, to find love, to make money. That's important. I'm going to make it really easy on everybody because I've gone off and done all these systems and programs and, you know, took, taken out the gems. I'll hand them to you on a platter. That's just the entry point. Uh, really, the metaphysics is there as a foundation for the journey of consciousness. Wow. Well, and we so, need to stop with that foundation right okay, there and take great. a quick commercial break. I hear the awesome. music in the background starting up. So we'll keep that as the metaphysics as our foundation. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes to hear the next step of, the, of this. Because this is so fascinating. I love you. We'll be back. Life Interrupted Radio will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. Be sure and stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com to learn more. Do you want to be a better leader? Have better relationships? Become more self-aware? Be a better communicator? Hi, I'm Sharon Saylor, best-selling author, professional speaker, and executive coach. And my life passion is empowering professionals to be the best that they can be. After years of working with professionals, I've discovered the seven things nobody is telling you that can cost you your clients, sales, and even your career. And I want to give it to you free. You've heard my show. You know my passion. And maybe we'll be working together sooner rather than later. So go grab this ebook now to find out the seven things that's costing you big time. Over at SharonSailor.com forward slash radio gift. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, Please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. I am Fidel Mshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family and then boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they recirculate to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And tonight we're here with Brent Michael Phillips. He's the author of the book, The Formula of Miracles, or the volumes of the book's Formula of Miracles. And we've been talking tonight about how a successful engineer upended his life to become a healer. And what he was just sharing with us in the first half there is about metaphysics. And now, Brent, begin to. Uh, one of my questions was about awakening versus enlightenment. And you told us about a good description of what is metaphysics. And you mentioned that was our foundation, the building yeah. block. So let's uh, pick it up from there and find out some more. And about so uh, I spent 10 years, the first 10 years of my journey, thinking that the metaphysics was all there was. That really it's just about becoming, yeah, that. most of us have no idea there's a whole realm of life beyond that. And the metaphysics is the foundation, it's our entry point. And that brings one to what I call awakening. And awakening is so simple, but so challenging because awakening is simply understanding exactly what you are. What are you? What is this awareness in your mind that has thoughts and feelings and experiences? 
Where does it come from? Where does it go? What's the nature of it? And now, so, a yeah. question there. What is the different? I want to make sure if I were using different language or same language. How does you differ from the concept of I am? Uh, they they are pretty much the same. Okay, I want to make uh, sure. The question talking. is, what is the I? Yeah. And uh, w w the 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 what what I found was I had spent my entire life including 10 years as a full-time professional healer, right? I, at this point, I had seen hundreds of miracles with my clients. I had really mastered the metaphysics, but I was still suffering in my life. Uh, I was able to make more money, to have less pain, but I was still suffering. And what I realized was, like many people, I was stuck on the treadmill of the ego, always striving, always thinking that if I make more money, get a promotion, have a bigger house, a better car, better insurance, more money in the bank, that that would somehow give me a happy life. What I found was it doesn't work that way. The real uh, happiness, the, the real serenity, the real joy is found by reorienting our relationship to the world, not by trying to make the world be the way we want. Oh, I and love so, that. Let's say that again. That's sure. really powerful. I think a the, lot of us get stuck in that. <laughs> yeah, the, the real joy, the real bliss, the serenity is found by reorienting your relationship to what is in the world around you. Mm. It's not entirely about forcing the world to be the way you want. And, and I think that's a where, lot of us are taught or, yes. I don't know if we're actually taught, but pick up <laughs> in the world that force is the way to do it. That's right. And mm. we think that if we don't have money, that that's our problem and getting money will solve it. That's not true. Go talk to any rich person, they'll tell you they still have problems. They're still worried about money. And so that's why I call it the treadmill of the ego. You're running and running and running, and you just think if you can run faster and faster, you're going to get to where you want. That never happens. Yes. And so we need to re reframe the way we relate to the world. But the most fundamental question is, well, what are you? And most of us spend our entire lives thinking we're some kind of separate being. You may think you're a human being. You may think you're a soul or a spiritual being playing at human. And so this is where it gets tricky. I can't wake people up fully just during a short call here, but I can give some pointers. Okay. And we've all heard that we're all one, right? Right. We've we all heard that. over and over from all the greatest teachers back through history. We're all one. We're all connected. That was the message that Buddha had. It was the message that Krishna had. It was the message that Christ had, on and on. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think they're correct. But yet, if you think of yourself as a human being or as a, even a soul or a spirit, then there's different spirits and souls, right? You got a soul. Yeah. I got a soul. That guy over there has a soul, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly, they're not all one. So that can't be you, can it? And so I'll offer to everyone listening, yes, there's a body. It, it needs to be taken care of. It needs to eat. It needs to exercise, to sleep, to be loved. There is a mind. The mind needs a purpose. It needs an identity. So there is a body. There is a mind. And yes, there is a soul. There is a reality of the soul. But what we are, the truth of awareness is far greater than any of that. And that's why I call awakening the foundation for the high, highest consciousness. It's been called the beginning of the end of suffering, which it is. It is the only way to penetrate to the core of attachment. And I'm sure you and your listeners have heard that a million times, right? Don't be attached <laughs> to result, just let it go, right? Right. Well, guess right. what? According to the paradigm of our society, that makes no sense. Telling us just to just surrender and let go runs against the grain of our cultural conditioning. And so we don't know how to do it or we do it wrong. But when you really understand the truth of how it works, you'll see that the surrender, the letting go is, is the fast track. And so to... The final piece here is what is enlightenment? It's simple. Enlightenment is the complete embodiment of awakening. And so the whole journey of higher consciousness is the journey through the metaphysics to find awakening, because uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. And then to, to simply embody that simple teaching. And uh, as an example, uh, one, one of my uh, wake-up calls to spirituality, uh, one of my all-time favorite books is Conversations with God. I love that book. Oh, yeah. That's well, one wonderful, my... wonderful. They, all, all of his stuff I, I, I enjoy. And when I read Conversations with God, it really changed the way I thought about things. But it was only, it, got st it stayed in the mind. It didn't embody. And so I could sit in my apartment and read my book and feel nice and warm and fuzzy. 
And then I'd get on my car and go on the freeway and some idiot would cut me off and I'd be screaming at him. So even though I had this idea in my mind that we're all one and we should be compassionate and support each other, I didn't embody it. I wasn't living that truth. Mm -hmm. And that's the greatest missing piece for, for, for most of us is there's a lot of good spiritual information and teachings out there. Okay, great. You got some new shiny nuggets in your mind. Good for you, right? It's not going to change much in your life. Things change when we, when we embody the teachings of high consciousness. I when think we live there's according another to that. level of that, though, that's uh, besides our own mind. Well, I guess it comes down to our own mind. But I'm thinking of if we're getting so much input on our healing, the experience of healing and our power from, uh, I like to call them the white coat authorities, or even our own friends and family who love us. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how we can experience something and then talk ourselves out of what we just experienced. Oh, sure. All the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time I ignored an intuitive hit, I'd have a big stack of dollars. <laughs> That's what I mean, I Over thinking. and over and over, right? Of course. And so, so even when we're shown the truth, we often walk away from it because it may not be convenient. It doesn't fit our preconceived notions. And so what, what it comes down to, what I learned is that we're all living in prisons constructed out of what we think we know. And so for the question I have for all the listeners is, what's more important to you, to be right about what you think you know or to experience love, to be healthy, to make a difference in the world, to be happy? Choose carefully. I don't think you can have both. <laughs> Those are great questions. We're up against the clock. We're going to take it, leave you pondering those questions while you hear this quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with some more. This is so fascinating. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Sharon, and of course you know me from here on the Autoimmune Hour, but maybe you didn't know I'm also an author, mostly nonfiction. But recently, I delved into the world of children's fiction with the Pinky Chenille series. The first book launched just a couple of weeks ago, and it's already getting awesome reviews. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you haven't had a chance to check out Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters, go over and check it out at PinkyChenille.com. That's Pinky, P-I-N-K-Y, Chenille, C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E, Dot com. Thanks. See you there. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. What are all the things you witness online in a day? Cats playing piano, selfies on your feed, your friend's picture being turned into a nasty meme that's been shared 50 times, 51, 52. When someone's being bullied online, it's hard to know what to do. Now you can speak up with the witness emoji. It looks like an eye in a speech bubble, and it's in the symbol section near the clocks in your phone. You'll let the world know it isn't cool, and you'll let your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And tonight, we're here with Brent Michael Phillips, and he's been telling us his story where he started as a successful engineer at MIT and started then left there to start some technology startups and had his own health, I'll say disaster, it just sounds like everything went wrong in his health, and how he found healing. And we've been talking about all the different foundations of awakening, and now we've 
discuss some of embodiment where we get to the higher levels where I start going embodiment. Brent, one of the questions I have is so many times I feel like I'm there and then something will happen and I'm like, doggone it. <laughs> How do we stay on the path? It, 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 does that question make well, sense? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> it, it is a normal. And in fact, it, the, there's a similar uh, mathematical aspect to physical healing that most of us, when we heal from something, it's usually not just a straight upward linear progression, is it? No. It's, it's not like you get 1% better every day for 100 days and then you're fine. Yeah, sometimes it was one step forward right. and four It's four often, back. it has an up and a down to it, right? Yeah. It has an up and a down, but if you're doing the right things, you're going generally in the right direction. Right. And you know you will get there eventually, right? Right. Especially people who have had a lot of pain. Pain is different every day, right? Just because I'm having more pain today than yesterday doesn't mean I'm on the wrong track. And so with, with the spiritual piece, uh, we can get to, to experience those higher vibrations, the higher consciousness, but things will take us out of it. Uh, that's all by design. Everything that seems to take you off your path will always lead you back onto it at a better place. Oh. And what, what many of us think is, well, I have to manipulate and make my life in such a way that it's easy for me to achieve higher consciousness. That's sort of, I don't want to say it's low vibrational thinking, let's call it medium vibrational thinking, that that's not really how it works ultimately. That ultimately the universe is trying to take us to that highest place of consciousness. And so um, one of the concepts I introduce, I'll offer right now, uh, straight out of mathematics, right, right out of the, uh, my algorithm studies at MIT, is what they call a local maximum and a global maximum. And so uh, the trouble is the ego only recognizes a local maximum. So let's say you could only see 10 feet around you mm -hmm. and you wanted to get to the highest elevation possible. Where would you end up? Well, you'd end up standing on your roof, right? But there's okay. nothing you could see within 10 feet that would be any higher. You'd be stuck there forever. But the universe wants to take you to the top of Mount Everest. It wants to take you to the highest place that, is, that, that exists. And sometimes it's necessary to tear you away from that local maximum so you can go higher. And so the nature of the ego is it identifies where it thinks it wants to be and tries to go there, and then it wants to stay there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if that's not the highest place you can go to, but you're unaware of it, the universe doesn't want you to be stuck. It loves you too much for that. So it will drag you away from what you thought you were, where you thought you wanted to be uh, in order to take you eventually somewhere higher. And this is the, the nature, the dueling nature of the ego and what you might call the soul or the guidance of the higher self, which is one of the really important things that I want to teach everyone is how to tune into that, how to see through the, the, the ego will always be there. You can't kill it. You can't destroy it. You can't enslave it. That doesn't work. You have that's to a make, good point. That yeah. was, okay. You, you simply can't. let it be what it is and, and learn to see through it. It becomes transparent. Uh, it's the nature of, you know, like my, my animals. I have cats. I love my cats. Uh, every day they meow and wake us up because they want to be fed. Why is that? That's just the nature of animals. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Good luck trying to stop that, right? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> and so that's sort of like the ego. It will do what it does. It wants to be loved. It wants health. It wants money. It, it, great. But when you learn to see through that, uh, you'll see that there is uh, something greater unfolding. And there's a, you know, I have a very simple process for helping people to achieve that higher consciousness. You know, the first step is to teach you the essential metaphysics. I think everyone needs to learn how to be a healer. And uh, for most people, uh, in anywhere from three weeks to three months, I can give you the skill set of a master healer. Really? Uh, three, I've, I've made, yep. three months? Depending on how dedicated you are and your level and ultimate talent, worst case, three months. Because wow. I've gone and greatly simplified it. You know, it would be like the difference between learning to drive a car in 1910 or today. Back then, you had to learn how to crank start the engine. You had to operate a gear shift and a clutch. You had all this stuff, right? It was a very complicated endeavor. Uh, today, you just get in your car, push the button, you know, step on the pedal and, and go. So that's what I've done with the metaphysics. I've made it so easy, so simple. Everyone can learn to heal with a couple hours of training. Then you learn how to access the subconscious, how to clear blocks, install new code, manifest through a theta space, clear space, uh, develop intuitive guidance. That's your metaphysical foundation. From there, it's time for awakening. This is really the spiritual journey of learning what you are. And that, you know, then begins you on the, the, the journey of the highest consciousness, which is simply awakening to enlightenment. And, you know, I have uh, programs designed to help people facilitate that. 
because that's what we're really here for. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll just throw out most people get it backwards. Most people think, oh, I want tons of money first. Then I'll go fix my health. You know, then I'll go worry about the spiritual piece. Uh, just so everyone knows, it usually doesn't go that way. <laughs> right. <You're... laughs> usually you need to get your health f fixed up and get your spiritual foundation in line. Then the money comes. Okay. Okay. That's usually the process for most people. One of the things and, you uh, mentioned was this levels of vibrational thinking. I want to circle back to that for sure. something because I think a lot of times people get stuck in realizing they don't realize what vibrational level they're on. If they're in a lot of pain, it's just it's what happens, I guess. And I'm let's talk about the different levels of vibrational sure. thinking. There's actually um, three primary levels. Vibration. And I, I have a, a much more sophisticated system, but the simple version is low, medium, and high vibration. A low vibration is victim thinking, where you think you don't have the power, that it's up to someone else. It's yeah, the doctor, it's, it's the government, it's the weather, it's the economy, it's my parents, it's my spouse, et cetera. So that's the low vibrations is victim thinking. Uh, the medium vibration, the middle, is what is called the victor. That's where you learn to become powerful by taking action. You learn skills, you get education, you develop, you know, a reputation, you make money. Uh, the trouble is, for most people, that's all we see. We think that's the end of the road. Mm -hmm. It's just becoming really wealthy, really famous, really healthy, really loved. Uh, it's not. Uh, the, the victor is simply a foundation for the vehicle. That's the highest level of, of, of thinking. And the vehicle, in the consciousness of the vehicle, uh, one releases attachment to the agenda of the ego and simply dissolves into presence. You simply be exactly who you are, where you are, when you are. Uh, that, that transition is made through awakening. And it's the only way. And so most of us, uh, you know, I was running around doing nothing but metaphysics for 10 years. And I helped a lot of people and it's good stuff. And I want to share everyone with that how to do that. But that's really just the warm up. That is there to give you the foundation <clears throat> to ascend to the consciousness of the vehicle, where you simply live in the knowingness that you are a pure vessel of divine will. And the journey of the vehicle is awakening to enlightenment. That by the time one is fully awake, which, you know, for most people takes maybe a year to two, to, to become fully, fully 100% awake, then all that's left is embodying that. So it doesn't take, doesn't take me long to give everyone all the knowledge you're ever going to need for the journey. That's the easy part. I guess that's a surprise uh, to me. I think about all of the grand masters I've read about and had experienced and I'm thinking, my gosh, you know, entire lifetimes in this pursuit of their own pursuit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, wow, so quickly that one can change their thinking and be able to use the vehicle uh, vibration. Uh, yeah, I'm but, surprised uh, at how fast it can happen. Th that's just the nature of technology. These masters didn't have the internet. Oh, These true. masters didn't have the ability <laughs> to go to a virtual class every weekend. Most of them didn't have the ability to hop on a plane and go fly around the world to find all the greatest teachers. Uh, most of them were given a limited set of guidance from their teachers and masters and their culture. And they had to fill in all the gaps. And that's why it took a lifetime. Okay. And you'll find that uh, all religions and spiritual traditions are actually teaching us awakening. You look at any of the major religions, any of the shamanic traditions, they all have the same message. But again, most people in their whatever context or culture you came from only got a piece of the puzzle. And so if you're only shown this much of it, all the rest you have to figure out on your own. Right. And many people spend their whole lives and never find it. Well, I've often thought we were only shown the piece of the puzzle uh, I said, to keep us coming back for more, to keep us in that state of hunger for, for mm -hmm. more. But maybe that's just my, my view of why uh, we're... There's an aspect of that. The, the, the higher <laughs> self fully understands the ego and will always motivate it in whatever way it needs to. So if we need to be motivated through curiosity, we will be made curious. It's that simple. Hmm. So it's like when I take my cats to the vet, they don't want to go to the vet. They don't like the carrier. So what do I do? I, I herd him into the bathroom, close the door, break out the carrier, 
and then by cracking open some canned food. They hear that <laughs> can opening, they follow me wherever I go, and then I toss them in the carrier. And so we, we're, the, the ego is motivated by the higher self through whatever will work. For some of us, it's desperation. That's unfortunate, but for some of us, that's what it took. That's what it took for me. Mm -hmm. For others, it may be simple curiosity. You don't have to have your life shattered to wake up to the truth. But some I'm glad you do. bring that. I'm glad you bring that up. But one of the things that we have uh, experienced with numerous people sharing with us their experiences on the autoimmune hour is that moment of complete transformation as they began to heal their body, and a awakening or a moment where they saw something. I guess that caused them to get stuck. I'll say a, a yes. trauma, something that caused them uh -huh. to all, shift all, back. The physical body is nothing more than a mechanism of, of feedback from the higher self. Oh. So if we are sick or if we are in pain, if we are injured, if we are not whole, that's the divine telling us that there's something off in our life. There's something that needs adjustment. It's just kind of like your car. Something goes wrong. The warning lights come on on the dashboard, right? Right. The trouble with modern medicine, as you say, the men in the white coats, it's like a mechanic who goes, oh, I can take care of that, and he disconnects the light. True. The white coat, I call them the white right. coat authority. Take a pill, you'll feel better. Right. Exactly. Let's just manipulate the symptoms so you don't think there's a problem. Well, guess what? If you disconnect all those lights on your dashboard, it doesn't mean your car won't break down, right? Yeah. And then, boom, your car breaks down on the freeway. And so our, our bodies are the same. When we get sick, when we have pain, it's that higher part of us saying, hey, there's something wrong here. There's something you need to pay attention to. There's an adjustment to be made. Oh, and often yeah. it's, an, it's almost always an emotional, spiritual thing. Well, for me, it was largely spiritual, but also had emotional. You know, I, I used to think, you know, if you wonder how my life was such a wreck, I used to think that what I believed didn't matter. I used to think that, oh, you know, I don't have beliefs. I just know what's true. I couldn't have been more wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's why I shattered my health unconsciously. I was completely off about the spiritual, emotional part of life. And my body was destroyed because that's what it took to get my attention. And to make mm -hmm. those adjustments, to open up, to look at the emotional, spiritual wounds. And yes, it, it, this is the same thing. Uh, if you look at the study of cancer patients, those that uh, <clears throat> have a relapse are almost always the ones that treated it on a physical level but didn't find that internal piece. Right. The, there's always a reason we get sick. And it's all, almost always emotional, spiritual, that manifests through a physical cause. So it may be that you moved into a house with mold and it made you sick. Okay, question is, why did you move there? You could have moved to lots of other places that wouldn't have made you sick, right? It could be chemical exposure. It could be emotional trauma. The, this is why I say the first step is to learn the metaphysics. You've got to get yourself healthy on all the levels. Your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, those all need to be healthy and strong. The metaphysics is wonderful for that. Then you're ready, you know, but that, then you're really ready for the real game. That's the journey of awakening. <laughs> Journey of Awakening. Yes. Well, we're down to our final commercial break here. Uh, Brent, this is fascinating. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break and find out some more but, uh, as we continue. I'm just mesmerized. So some of the questions are flying out of my brain as I'm so mesmerized. So we'll be right back after this. I'll collect my thoughts. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life, and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.omtimes.com. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, 
heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped, childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Sharon, and of course you know me from here on the Autoimmune Hour, but maybe you didn't know I'm also an author, mostly nonfiction, but recently I delved into the world of children's fiction with the Pinky Chenille series. The first book launched just a couple of weeks ago, and it's already getting awesome reviews. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you haven't had a chance to check out Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters, go over and check it out at PinkyChenille.com. That's Pinky, P-I-N-K-Y, Chenille, C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E.com. Thanks. See you there. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Seeler from SharonSeeler.com. And today we're here with Brent Michael Phillips, who's the author of the book, The The Formula for Miracles, a three-volume book, as well as other books. So he's been telling us about the way to, well, beyond enlightenment. I love this idea of being the vehicle. It's wonderful, the idea of vehicle vibrations. That really resonated with me about letting go and being in present moment. Let's talk some more about the, it's such an intriguing place. I know I'm not there, but let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about this vehicle vibration that's uh, the place that we are, are headed, because I find that fascinating on so many levels. And I guess the one level I've, I've spoken to it before is this idea of how do we know it when we're there? Uh, you can't miss it. Okay. <laughs> and really, uh, I would say, as soon as you let go of the I that you think has to get there, then maybe you'll actually get there. Oh, okay. Because we think that, well, I have to get there. That's the core of the problem. What you think is you is not you. And my mindset, Brent's mindset used to be, oh, I want to go learn the secrets from the master so I can become some superpower guru, enlightened being. That's not how it works. Right. That's it's, ego. Right. That's the ego. That's the hyperdeveloped victor. And there's nothing bad about being a hyperdeveloped victor, right? I go to CrossFit to try to build up my muscles. I like feeling strong, right? We try to eat better, take the right supplements to make our bodies healthy, our minds clear. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's all the treadmill of the ego. You can run endlessly. You're never going to achieve what you really want. Mm -hmm. And so when you think that one of the greatest contradictions in the history of language is the statement, I am enlightened. It's oh, ridiculous. Explain, <laughs> explain anyone, to me. Anyone who says that uh, is not. It, it can never be true. Because to, to be enlightened is to live in the total embodiment of connection with everything. Mm-hmm. Knowing that everything is you. Everything is happening automatically according to a divine blueprint. And to say that I am some separate being that has this quality of enlightenment that you don't is like saying, well, I have an engineering degree from MIT and you don't, so I'm smarter than you. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that, that is the exact opposite of what enlightenment is. That there is no I in enlightenment. Okay. Even though the letter's in there. <laughs> yeah, that, that went <laughs> right? my head. Yeah. yeah, the letter's in there, but there is no idea of I. Enlightenment is exactly the opposite. It is the transcendence of the idea of the I. So it's never a quality of Brent. It's not about, oh, this guy's enlightened. It's a question of how much of the ego have you let go and seen through to get to that place of surrender, of serenity, of joy, of peace. That there's a lot of myths about enlightenment that are not true. Yes. And uh, I was at the effect of many of them. That enlightenment is living in total acceptance of what is. There is no resistance. There is no suffering. 
Uh, the Buddha told us you know, a long time ago that pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Mm -hmm. And so it is only our identification with the false idea of the I that creates all of our suffering, which is why I mentioned I, I learned to master the metaphysics. I made money. I healed my body. I started, you know, I had dates for the first time in my life. Oh, my God, that's probably the greatest miracle of them all <laughs> is Brent getting a date, right? <laughs> Anyone can heal their elbow, but Brent getting a date. Wow, right? No matter how much money I made or how much, you know, I helped people, I was still suffering because I was still stuck in the ego. And that's where awakening. And so what I want to offer to everybody is one step at a time. Be where you're at. Trust that where you're at is exactly the right place. And there are higher dimensions to our universe. Our physicists know about this. Anyone that's into popular science knows we've had the 11 dimensional M theory for 30 years now. Mm -hmm. It is these higher dimensional energies that I'm talking about. That's the metaphysic. We all have intuitive guides. We all have a higher self. They're here all the time to help us. We just know how, need to know how to access it. It's kind of like if you lived on earth with all these radio signals, but you didn't have a radio to tune to them, you'd have no idea. There's right. there's the vast variety of of music, of information, of sports, of entertainment, of news that you just have to tune to. And so once you learn, you know, first we have to address what's going on in our lives, fix, get our health on track, right? Feel good about ourselves, develop self-esteem, purpose. Then uh, we graduate. So awakening is a graduation. And the way I see it is that we spend many, many, many lifetimes as a victor. It's usually numbered in the hundreds to develop all these important skills, mm -hmm. how to be disciplined, how to be focused, how to learn, uh, ethics, integrity, fairness. These are critical. But then we graduate and become a vehicle where we still use all those skills, but our primary focus is no longer on just developing those skills. It's on using them to serve consciousness. Uh, I'll say awakening is kind of like graduating from high school. You know, most of us went to high school and graduated. <laughs> we learned a bunch of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. When you're in high school, your focus is to learn, right? Yeah, you may have a part-time job, but for almost all of us, what you're there to do during that time is learn and graduate. After that, it's all about applying what you've learned. And so the awakening is a graduation. And so the, those of high consciousness from the outside look the same. The masters among us, they have jobs, they have families, they have 401k plans, they pay taxes, they get sick, they go to doctors. They live just like the rest of us. The difference is on the inside. That's the journey of the vehicle. There's no suffering. There's simply presence. There may be joy, there may be sadness, but there's no suffering. Mm. And that's ultimately where we're all being led. And that's what, you know, I want to try to make this as easy as I can for everybody. I uh, read all sorts of incredibly confusing ancient sacred texts and visited with masters where everything is a riddle. I want to get rid of all that. I want to make it one, two, three. So we're just about down to our the last couple of minutes, Brenton Sense, but a great place to transition to tell us about how we can find out about more about the one, two, three and all the interesting things you've been sharing. Absolutely. With us so, uh, you know, I know a lot of people do these shows to sell books. That's actually not why I'm here. I want to give some away. So anybody uh, that would like to hop onto my website at awakeningdynamics.com, you can get on my email list. I will give you free access to one of my live block clearing calls so you can learn to communicate with your subconscious, experience some subconscious clearing. Uh, I'll also invite you to uh, my next Helathon, which is a, a webinar I do to give people the essentials, not only the knowledge, but also the experience of higher consciousness. We'll do a, a consciousness shifting process where I will literally entrain you up to a higher vibration temporarily, which for most people, you'll notice any pain you have will lessen or disappear completely. And most people also start to see energies and auras with their open eyes and even other lifetimes. And that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg. And all that comes for free. Uh, I just really want to share this with you. Uh, anyone that wants to come to the Healathon will also uh, give you uh, both the first two volumes of my new book. Where Science Meets Spirit, The Formula for Miracles, Volume 1 and 2, because I want people to learn this. You know, I want you to see that this is real, that you know, I have spent a lot of time going around to people that make a lot of promises and charge a lot of money and been very disappointed. And so it's been my mission to find what's real and valuable, to find those gems, and to make them really easily accessible to everybody. 
because it took me, uh, what, five years to become a master healer being full time. That's too hard. Uh, that's that, that's actually not bad, right? You know, five years to become a master healer. Uh, yeah. but most people can do it three weeks to three months. Because I've awesome. greatly simplified it. I've created all sorts of great technology. You know, I've, I've done what they taught me to do at MIT. I took the systems apart, put them back together, made them better. And I will also would love to be everyone's coach on, on your journey through Awakening to Enlightenment. Thank you. We've been having Brent Michael Phillips on the show, and he's the creator of Awakening Dynamic System. And you can find out more about him at awakeningdynamics.com. I'll have that up on Life Interrupted Radio for you if you're listening. I know a lot of you like to listen uh, while you're out walking or exercising and things. So you can find the website on that Life Interrupted Radio, where we usually go. And remember to go sign up for Transcribe Tribe at lifeinterruptedradio.com. And then the window will pop up, sign up for Transcribe Tribe. We're almost done with all our transcripts. As you know, we've got 155 plus episodes. And since we just started transcribing a couple of months ago, it's taking us a bit of time. If you don't find the one you want, just drop us a note on the contact form and we're happy to get that Put that one to the top of the queue. As always, have a great weekend, whatever your adventures. And join me next Friday night for another fascinating episode of the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. And as always, enjoy. The information provided on LifeInterruptedRadio.com is for educational purposes only. What you hear, read, and see on Life Interrupted Radio is based on experience only. The information presented here should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on Life Interrupted Radio. Mm-hmm.